Hello and welcome to my video. So in this video, I am going to be making an elephant teapot. I'm making this uh, teapot for a wood firing that I'm doing, um, and we are firing a Noborigama kiln. If you don't know what that is, um, basically it's a kiln that's built into a hill, and there's two different chambers inside the kiln, which you'll see in, um, in the video too when we build the wall of the kiln. Um, but basically there's a wood chamber and a salt chamber, and this, this teapot ended up going in the wood chamber, but I wanted to sculpt a teapot that was a um, an elephant, and the trunk was a spout. I did see this online, so it wasn't my original idea, but I did do a variation and take on it. So I'm, I was really happy with the way this came out. It took a while to sculpt, and a really long time to get the spout right. Um, the trunk really wasn't looking like a trunk, and it wasn't looking like an elephant, but then I had to trust the process, and then I finally got this result here. Um, I'm really happy with the way this came out, but don't get attached to the teacups. So unfortunately when we were bisque firing um, this piece, one teacup had just randomly cracked and snapped in half, and then the other teacup literally went missing uh, inside the kiln. So I had glazed it and everything, which you'll see I glazed it um, at the studio, but once I, it comes out of the kiln, it's gone, and I don't, I, don't, I don't know where it went. I don't know if someone accidentally took it, but uh, both of the teacups uh, <laughs> were casualties and I never saw them again. Wasn't a big deal though because they only took a second to throw. Um, but as you can see here, I have a lot more items that went into the kiln. Um, I had about, I think, 15 items. But I'm just dipping the lid inside Bermuda Chino, which is a light blue Chino. And of course, with, with wood firing, as always, you don't really know what color you're going to be getting out of the kiln because it's going to be hit with wood ash and carbon and a, a lot of reduction. So it basically, it's not going to just be blue. It's going to be a, well as you can see, it's going to be a very crystallized, very cracked, and it, 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 I think it came out amazing. Um, I don't think it could have come out any better um, in the results, just because I really liked the way the wood uh, wood fire like, played around with this. Like I said, it was in the wood chamber, um, so it really played around with the piece and um, made a lot of variations inside the glaze, and I really liked that. So I just dipped the whole thing inside of a, the Shino, and the reason I used the Shino is because Shinos don't move, which basically means it won't drip, and it won't hide the texture. Um, it did, it did kind of hide some textures and some sculpture parts, like kind of like the trunks. The glaze did get caught on the trunk and then um, created like a drip there, but it's not too big of a deal. You'll see that in a, in a minute or two, but. Um, as you can see here, I'm, I'm wadding, which is basically I have to take clay and I have to put it and glue it to the bottom of all my pieces that I glazed. Um, this is just so then when the glaze uh, drips, if it does, or it hits, it hits with wood ash, it doesn't stick to the kiln. And these are the two chambers, the salt chamber and the wood chamber. Mine is, uh, the teapot is in the wood chamber, and then this is one of my mugs that's inside the salt chamber. And then we had to mud up the walls of the kiln. I was on that kiln shift, so I had to work for four hours, and we built the entire door uh, for both chambers. And then we had to use mud, uh, which is just basically um, clay with some sand and grog in it. And then we just put that all over the walls of the kiln so we can seal it up. And then it was time for my shift. So I was working another graveyard shift, which was 12 p.m. to 4 a.m. Um, it was kind of miserable, but it was because uh, I was all alone. But it was really actually pretty relaxing once I got into the groove of things. I had to rise 25 degrees every 15 minutes. And so it's basically 100 degrees every hour. As you can see, I hit 1,000 degrees, and I just kept going up. Uh, the kiln did want to go really fast. Apparently, uh, later in later shifts, I've heard that I heard that um, they really wanted to slow down the kiln because we got past cone 12, which is super hot, and we kind of went past where we're supposed to. Um, but we got it un under control. Um, during my shift, you know, I didn't get past 1,200 degrees. I, that was my end of my shift. I got to 1,200, and then I left at 4 a.m. Um, but this is the results of the kiln. Super happy with the way these came out. And in my opinion, I really like these results better than the train kiln. Um, but I really like the the results I got. Uh, we, there was this blue called Tim's Blue, Aurora Blue, I believe, and it came out amazing on this bowl. You'll see in a minute. And these plates look really cool with the blue too. My mugs came out really great. I had textured the sides of the mugs, and a bunch of wood ash and a bunch of salt and a bunch of reduction made reds and blues and greens and stuff that I didn't glaze there. It just appeared. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of variation in all these in all these uh, pieces, which I'm happy there was because it made um, made it not plain and boring like an electric kiln could be, but it had just such interesting results you'll never see with an electric kiln. And I was super happy with the way these came out. Um, sorry if I sound sick, I have a cough, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.
You whip up my appetite Don't leave me 